You're about to listen to the Weekly Business Hour podcast. I am Rick Schisler, Silver Fox Advisor, your host for the show. The show is broadcast live each Monday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on IRLoneStar.com. You can reach me on my Facebook page, The Weekly Business Hour, or by email at rick at IRLoneStar.com. The Weekly Business Hour is sponsored by Patricia Cooper Insurance Agency, Taylorized PR, Schooly Mitchell with Jerry Polio, and the Silver Fox Advisors. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the program. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor and your host for the Weekly Business Hour. I really appreciate you getting up early, if you will, or getting to work on time and having this hour between 11 and 12 to listen to us live if you're doing so. Well, let's get started with today's show. We'll start with our thought for the week, gaining control of your hourly labor cost. We'll talk a little bit about that, and hopefully I'll give you some tips and ideas and you can use perhaps even today in your business. Then a quick check-in with Dick on the business of Lone Star. And our special guest today are Mike O'Brien of Super Green Solutions, who will share up share with us the startup and building of a new business. And then Tracy and Jason, owner, the owner of Conroe Coffee, will join us to update us on what's happening with business in downtown Conroe. So sit back, get ready, pull out your pad and pen, and boy, let's get started. First of all, a quick reminder, if you have a question or a thought uh, or a comment at any time during the show or after the show, please email me. My email is rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. And remember, even if you have a business question about your own business, I'd be glad to look at your question and respond to you. First of all, our thought for the week, gaining control of your hourly labor costs. This is a topic, a little bit of an unusual fit for my thought for the week, but I came across a short article about it, and I used to be involved uh, some years ago. I had a company, and one of the things we did was time and attendance. And I guess at that time, I was amazed, and I'm really still amazed today, how many businesses I come across, the folks that ask for my help or to take a look at their business, they really don't have control over their hourly labor cost. Uh, You know, Robert Collier said, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. And to me, that kind of talks about time and attendance along with a lot of other parts of your business. It's a small thing, but it really can add up to big costs that can be saved by control of your time and attendance. Now you say, what are you talking about? What is this control of my time and attendance? I have my people check in, check out. But do you do it in a way that's automated? Do you have control over it? I mean, there are literally hundreds of systems out there. And my good friend Matt Umboldt at Paysphere, uh, they actually are a payroll service company, and they also provide you with a software time and attendance system. And in his weekly newsletter, he talks about all the savings that are available. And the reality is all you have to do is implement the systems, and then the savings come. You don't have to change anything else. But the kind of things where you will save, it'll reduce employee time entering time cards. If you're using the old conventional punch cards, which many businesses still are, just the fact that you automate it and have people enter a PIN number or a card or something, slide in and out, it reduces their time there. Reduces supervisor approval time because they're given a report instead of individual cards or check-in sheets. Reduce entry time by clerical staff. That's an easy one. Because you automate the system, the time can automatically be entered into your payroll system. Reduce time to correct entry errors because there really shouldn't be any errors because the systems that are automated that I had experience with 15 years ago, they don't allow the employee to continue to do the wrong thing. They stop them and make them go get a supervisor in many cases and make them correct their mistakes right then and there. Reduce time for incorrect entries and changing, reduced overtime because of the visibility of labor costs. That's a huge item if your business has overtime issues because you can check on a daily basis or more often if you choose to how much time someone's already worked during that payroll week. And if you have overtime issues coming up, you need someone to work, typically it allows you, if you have the flexibility, to select the person with the least amount of time, therefore controlling, if you will, your overtime. And then also, last but not least, but a real part of business today, there are all kinds of rules and regulations. The Federal Labor uh, Labor Act 
there are new rules coming out, in fact, even this fall. And your time and attendance system can be programmed in many cases so that you comply with these rules. So there's no reason, really, to not have an automated time and attendance system. Again, there are hundreds of them out there. Uh, the one that Matt uses in his business is fantastic. Very little cost of installation of the system if you use their payroll services. But the idea is we need to control our business expenses, right? But it's these little items like time and attendance that just fly by us. So new directions and opportunities always available for us. I hope this helps you in your business. You're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business. Because the weekly business hour is where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. And let me remind you before we go further that there is a Facebook page for the weekly business hour. I encourage you to go to the page on Facebook, like it, set yourself up to get an alert. So each week when we post the podcast for this show, which is on or about Wednesday of each week, that you'll be alerted to the show. So if you miss part of it or miss the show, you have a chance to listen to it at your time. Now let's check in right here on the business at Lone Star. What is on tap with Lone Star this coming week, Dick? This week, we're going to be doing our transition to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, and our scheduled launch date is October 25th. That's a Tuesday. Uh, We will be going down completely over the weekend, starting on Friday night all the way through Sunday. Uh, So keep an ear out on 104.5, 106.1, and also follow us on Facebook for more updates as we get closer to that date. Well, obviously, an exciting time in the business of uh, Lone Star Internet Radio, Lone Star Community Radio, uh, a whole new offering available on FM, and I encourage the listeners to this show and all the shows to be ready for FM, so if you're out in your vehicle around Montgomery County, you can tune in and listen to talk or music, whatever's on at that hour. Well, now to the part of the show I enjoy most, and obviously, is and that's when we have guests, and as I mentioned earlier, we have Mike O'Brien with Super Green Solutions here with us in the studio today to to talk about his successful startup business. Mike, welcome to the studio. Well, thanks, Rick. I appreciate you having me here. Well, you've got an interesting story. You and I were talking prior to the show today, and I looked at your website, and we had touched base before. Uh, If you would, share with us uh, what Super Green Solutions is. What business are you in? Well, I'll try to put it most simply. We provide products, and, and we're actually a resource for businesses and people to save money as they go down the path to becoming energy efficient. So we, we handle solar applications, LED lighting, energy management technology, water heating, and air and water purification is a whole holistic pr- approach for the, uh, the entire uh, facility, whatever it is. Well, you know, one of the things that I noticed when I went to the website, you really, and you mentioned a lot of, of areas that you cover, you really cover, if you will, the waterfront of energy, uh, you know, management solutions, uh, a lot different than the old days that you and I were talking about where somebody can buy and put a timer on, on right. the air conditioner or something. Uh, what is the, the, the largest area or largest product that you, as far as interest uh, in that you provide? You know, it, it kind of moves around, but right now we're really focusing in on LED. Uh, LED just provides uh, so many opportunities, uh, you know, to uh, to help people out and saving money. It's one of the major, uh, you know, uh, the major factors that you can reduce your uh, the wattage or electrical use that you have in your, your facility. You know, one of the things my wife and I just finished building a home uh, out in Montgomery, and when I looked at light fixtures, we had LED fixtures, uh, particularly uh, that were placed for us and say in a in a work area, um, also LED light bulbs and and but everything was more expensive LED. Uh, why do I choose LED? Well, you know, kind of to take a step back here first is that you know LEDs changed everything. You know, it used to be that LED, you know, with a light bulb going out and buying a light bulb, you'd you'd you know get the honeydew and say, hey, go pick up the sixty five watt light bulb and. And so you go down there and you kind of feel good that you you got the right bulb. Well, now there's so many things that are involved in it: lumens, Kelvin, uh, CRI, which is a color rendering index, and 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 even the wattage are, are all big big players in everything now. Well, now when you when you look at LED and and you know what it, and the the cost of LED and what the uh, the technology that's in there, uh, it it's changed the whole game in that. 
it's not as simple as changing on a light bulb anymore. So, so when uh, you, know, you start going down that path, you, you, you do it pretty much if you're a uh, do-it-yourself or you'll, you'll go down to the box store and you'll pick up a, a bulb and, and think that's kind of it, what we got. Well, there's a lot of issues that happen with that. The, the box stores don't really show you all the variety that's there. We, we can source uh, any, anything you, you want. If it's being made, we can, we can find it through, throughout the world. Um, we have, have a, I'll give you an example about the, the home project. When uh, I, I went into a Conroe home, he had a, a huge problem with, with uh, bugs in, in, uh, you know, up at the lake, and, and uh, that was the, the first part that he was really looking at. Well, he sourced out a, a product from one of the box stores, and, and uh, it, it ran around uh, $25. It was a little bit brighter, and, and, uh, uh, you know, and it is also a little bit more uh, white light than, than uh, he really probably wanted. I was able to source out the right bulb for him, get him a longer life, a five-year warning instead of a three-year warning. And then, you know, uh, guess what? I, I also sold that, that fixture for $7 less than he was getting at the box store. So, you know, that's just an example of how we can help walk down that, that path. I know you do a lot of commercial work, too, and I, I don't know if that's the heart and soul, but you do serve residential, obviously, or the consumer uh, on a commercial basis, though. I, and I've been involved in projects over the year about saving money on lighting, uh, in production facilities and whatnot, huge dollars involved. Oh yes, sir. There, there's uh, uh, we're working on a, a facility, uh, you know, out on the west side of uh, of Houston that uh, is for a, a hotel that's uh, ground up, and and it certainly involves a, a lot of dollars. But you know, with everybody, they're they're under a budget, under a contract, so you have to be aware of what you know, who your customer is, what they're doing, and what they're looking for so that you can, you know, kind of play the game and, and, and know what, what they need so that you can be the, the one that's uh, left standing. And then, then on top of that, when you get into, uh, you know, some of the projects, there, you know, some especially retrofits, uh, there's some speciality that, uh, you know, that they need. And, and, and while you're doing that, and especially for a large project, you're, you're looking at a, 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 a price that you're, you're going, well, this is pretty exorbitant until you understand what, what LED is really about. And it's about the return on investment. So for a facility up here, uh, we had a, a project that's going to cost them about an extra $55,000 to, uh, uh, to do this upgrade. But the thing is, after one year, they're going to have all that payback back because they, they don't have the hidden costs. They don't have the labor costs. They don't have the replacement of the fixtures because LED lasts 25 years, not, not the one year, a year and a half you get out of a fluorescent. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. And it, it, my finance classes uh, taught me that if I can get a one-year payback, anything under three years was almost a no-brainer. So one year is an absolute. Well, let me ask you, kind of back up a little bit. What motivated you to, to get into this business, start this business? Well, you know, I I, uh, I spent 30 years in the restaurant business, and, and you know, uh, there's there's it was about people. That was everything that I learned about people, and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and I could bring that to this business. Also, systems. Uh, uh, I know I've heard you talk about uh, systems, and, and, and uh, it certainly, you know, uh, takes care of costs. It certainly takes care of consistency. And then there's the, the the detail orientation that I received out of the restaurants, you know, with all those things and coming over to Super Green, the one thing that wasn't in there was that labor piece you were talking about. Uh, I've been doing that for 30 years and, and loved doing that, but uh, it was time for me to, uh, to to look at getting into a new technology and, and something that was cutting edge, something that was growing, and, and that's why I, I kind of sourced out that. And on top of that, Super Green just had a, a variety of products that were simple and made sense, and those are the, the, the things that's that, that uh, uh, simple, easy thing that, that uh, is, is usually the best answer, and, and that's why I, I uh, you know, went with Super Green. It's interesting. Keep it simple, stupid. That's yeah, an old expression my dad had. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I, I attribute that to him. So, okay. <laughs> but no, that's very interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we need to take a short break right now, and we do. Uh, when we come back from that break, we're going to talk to Mike a little bit more about green solutions and how they may really have an impact even on your small business. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategy and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Taylorize PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, 
your story is told. Taylorized PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylorized PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. And you are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the show. And we've been talking with Mike O'Brien today uh, with Super Green Solutions. Well, you know, Mike, one of the things that you and I touched on in our conversation before the show and talking about some of the things that we need to do in general business and building a business, uh, we talked about relationships and uh, what emphasis you put on that. Talk to us a little bit how and why relationships are so important in your business. Well, first of all, you talk about relationships. I want to talk about my wife, Sandra, of 29 years. Uh, our anniversary is tomorrow, and she's uh, put up with me for those 29 years, and, and uh, I can't thank her enough because without her, none of this other stuff would have been happening. So one of the lessons I learned uh, in, in the restaurant business is that I've got to you know, take time for, for the, the ones that I care about. So uh, uh, without, without that part of your, your life taken care of, you can't do the rest. So as far as going into uh, relationships, uh, you know, one of the old the old methods was uh, in, in in the business world was to go door to door, and you know what for for Super Green that really isn't a, a viable way of doing things. Uh, going door to door is is uh, uh, going to get your name out there, but it's not really going to tell them uh, who and what you're about. So I I am part of a a BNI group, uh, the the Woodlands Winning Edge, right up here in the Woodlands area, and, and uh, you know, man, that those relationships uh, you you you're in there. They take a little time to build, but once you build them, uh, they they become a great connection for for you. The the people that they built relationships are also uh, you know uh, uh, are now your source that you can get to as well. So uh, to me, that's been been a foundation uh, of of uh, my business. Some businesses need need that type of relationship. Uh, some don't. Mine certainly does well i think uh, as a general rule and any client i have in any business even the one that wants to stay behind the counter well they have relationships across the counter right. every once in a while i'll run in somebody that wants to stay in the back though you know in the office or production area and we we t- they have relationships yes but it's reluctant with their vendors with their employees and and they really have to work on that because if you have good relationships out there and in your case like i think you're inferring it's referrals it's it's meeting people right. uh, and you're obviously being a new business you're having to build your success on what you did yesterday oh yeah yes sir and and, and you know you're, you're right about the standing behind the counter i know that uh uh, literally from a you know the previous experience of uh, my my previous life in the restaurants, uh, you have to go out in front of that counter. You have to be in front of those people, and if you don't have that, then uh, qualify what you're doing in your you know the your your look in, into going into a franchise. I, I watched a, a gentleman that uh, you know opened up a business, and and when he did, uh, you know he expected everybody to come to him and. That just was what his model was about, and and uh, he refused to see that end of it. So you know, if you're if you're going to go into a franchise, realize that you got to you really kind of have it with a passion, and and you know, it's not going to be just you're going to plunk down some money, and and you know, they're they're going to come to you and give you money. Uh, you know, the 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 truth of it is, you you have to have that passion because you have to get past all the other hurdles that are out there, and and uh, you know, if if you don't, uh, you you won't have those uh, you know uh, th- those successes. Well, and you you made a point. Let's touch on that briefly because I don't know that I, I clarified that for our audience that Super Green Solutions is a franchise. Yes. And uh, tell tell our listeners briefly why you decided to go the franchise route. Well, I'm not much of a risk taker, and you know when when uh, we looked at, at what would, was possible out there and getting into you know coming up on Super Green uh, was like okay, this is all new technology, things that I I didn't know, didn't know what was was going on. Uh, they they have a source of vendors for us. They they uh, you know, have a have a template for us to, to work on. And and in my previous life, I'd worked for corporations and worked for franchises, uh, and. In the restaurant world, and, and uh, uh, the truth is, I like systems, and and I know what systems can bring. And and uh, they laid out a, a great system. Uh, they they in fact used the the book, uh, the Emith uh, Revisited, uh, that that uh, it was my template for how I uh, you know open up my business. I had to to, to learn one position template that out for for the person to take that over and then graduate myself up uh so so to me that that was important the other part was that that uh with the vendor relationships i i've already you know learned on my own with this business and trying to pick up vendors they may have a great product but if they don't have the support for you they're not really somebody that you can use because you can't count on them then then your people can't count on you well and you make a great point there and one of the things that you and i also discussed which i'd like 
to to talk to, with our audience and let them know about it. It's something, and you've already <laughs> figured it out in less than a year, and I congratulate you. You do some outsourcing. Yes, and sir. I always find, or not always, but a lot of times we'll find business owners reluctant, particularly when they start up, to spend the money and make the effort to outsource. And we were talking in your case about social media, uh, obviously very important to most businesses today. And you made a decision to outsource. Why was that? Well, I, I was looking for someone to, to really fill two roles, being, you know, uh, pinching those pennies. I was trying to get someone that I could hire in into the store. And, I, and, and you know, I preferably would, would have loved to have that person that I could, you know, uh, talk to across the table every every day. But what, what uh, uh, I was able to do was you know, because I talk to people, because I'm, I'm kind of letting them know my business, uh, it, you, you find out that you have a lot more, you know, answers coming back your way. And, and I was able to source somebody out of Arizona to, to do my social media for me i didn't need her in the store i needed her to know what my business was about and and what you know, we were looking to do and that's what uh it was really the, the the driving force behind that was just to simply talk to people and, and find out what was you know what was out there well i congratulate you in so many startup businesses they just they're reluctant to outsource certain things and there's things you can do and it sounds like it's been a big success for you well back on on the green solutions we talked in the first segment about you know, it's more expensive, say, to buy LED lights or fixtures and lights and things like that. But in a, if I have a business, I'm a business owner, you know, they cost more. Why are they uh, really worth that to me as a business owner? Well, it, it's it's about what you're going to pay in the future. If you, you know, you can look at it and say, well, you know, that's just too expensive to do right now. Well, in that whole time, you're going to be losing the, the money, the potential you had to, to save money uh, that's out there. And and uh, I could tell you in, in all the times that we went through a budgeting process in all my years in, in the business world, every time it came down to pushing that, that utility bill and what would that utility bill get me? And, and, you know, most of the time it was, well, we'll find other places to make that up after we, we made our budget. It was kind of the hiding place to, to put numbers. Well, uh, I can tell you that, that we have solutions that, that, uh, take care of those bills and, and, you know, reduce those costs to give you more flexibility to go into other areas and spend monies in other places. In your opinion, as you've spent your first year or so starting this business, what would you share with uh, someone is the key to building a successful business today? Yeah, you know, you, uh, we talked about it a little bit. Is that we have to have passion. If you don't have the passion, then you're not going to uh, have uh, uh, the ability to to get past the hurdles that are out there. You have to have an open mind about uh, you know what uh, what you're working with and what you thought the the plan was. And and as much as I say I love systems, uh, I've seen systems uh, destroy you know companies and and that they the system is a tool to use, but sometimes they ended up using it as a tool. And and you know that that's just not the way to to do it. So you have to be willing to to look at what you're doing is it really worth what uh, uh, you know the the payback for that and as an example of outsourcing the the social uh, the social media I could have done that I could have learned a whole bunch about doing that but that wasn't what was going to bring for me what uh, what I could do best to bring sales in I could get someone else to do that part of the work and and uh, you know that that's the the biggest challenge when you wear all these hats you you uh, you have to pick and choose which one you're gonna you're gonna uh, most effectively run and, and then get other people that could probably do that that job better than you and you have to admit that they can well quite frankly I couldn't say it any better that prioritizing on what hat we wear or we put on today is a very important point of, in my opinion, of being successful, particularly in the early years when uh, you do wear so many hats in a business. Well, as you sit here today, what do you see the future for your business? Uh, what does it hold for your business? Well, I, I think that we've, we've kind of run through the, the gambit of all of our products and, and you know, uh, LED seems to, to be our our. Know, kind of doorway in uh, with with all the businesses, so we'll probably be you know emphasizing uh, more of LED. LED certainly has got a a, a lot of of uh, teaching to do of the uh, of the businesses and of the individuals about you know what it really does, what it's really out there, and and uh, we can do that part. But uh, uh, I think really the LED is uh, the start, and then we can get involved in the other things like energy management that uh, we do with with restaurants and and hotels. In five years or so, do you think, where do you see the energy solution business or what I, the super green solutions? you see that business with great growth potential or is it still in a startup phase? Well, like I, I did in my 10-minute commercial that uh, we, we do with the, in the B&Is, um, I, I explained to people that there's this, this 
swell of water out there, and, and, and uh, it's turned into a tsunami. There's a lot of uh, uh, things coming that are already in the process, already in the pike. PACE is an example of that, Pro- uh, Property Assessed Clean Energy. It's a government uh, a government function uh, that, that supports uh, uh, owners and businesses. Also, uh, you know, there, there's uh, rebates and the programs that are, that are laid out there to uh, to help. And then on top of that, where we, we – really talk about it it's it's about money right so uh money is is the driving force for most things and and that's not any different than an energy business uh it it really is about money and and if uh you can you can show somebody that can save money doing it or even get get product without having to in essence pay for it because of the savings they they receive from the the energy efficiency uh it that's what's going to drive it and it's going to change the 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 whole country uh it's going to you know pace as an example will help us catch up to what's already happened in, in europe and and uh and we could we could do that in, in uh, just a few years. You know, it's a very interesting future. I think you're in a dynamic, exciting business, and I 100% agree. It changes just constantly. Uh, an amazing situation. Well, Mike, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, uh, educating us on some green solutions, as well as talking to us about a business that you've just started and your experiences in it. If people would like to learn more about you or your business, what's the best way to contact you? Well, you can always do it personally, and that's uh, 281-686-2380. That's my cell phone number. Uh, phone number. But you can also uh, look on our website, www.supergreensolutions.com. Uh, if you want to get to spe- specifically my franchise, it, then you do forward slash the hyphen Woodlands hyphen Texas. Do me a favor. Give me that phone number again. All right. It's 281-686-2380. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, for this portion of the show. We're going to take a break here at the bottom of the hour, and when we come back, we're going to have uh, Tracy and Jason join us from the coffee shop, Conroe Coffee, and talk about what's going on in business-wise in downtown Conroe. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Running a business is hard. The pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmholio. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and the host of the Weekly Business Show. And we're back again. And I am so excited because we're going to have some fun now, a lot of fun. So just sit back and relax a little bit because we've got Tracy and Jason in the studio. Tracy and Jason, the owners of Conroe Coffee. And if you haven't been in downtown Conroe lately, one, you need to do that. And two, when you're there, you need to drop by Conroe Coffee because that's kind of the center of downtown, in my opinion, on what's going on business-wise. So welcome to both of you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Glad to have you in there. And for folks who haven't visited Conroe Coffee before, talk to us about what your business is really all about. Well, we're a coffee shop. We have Italian coffee. We make sandwiches. We have ice cream that comes from Michigan. We have a boutique with very unique items. And we just, we have a real feel of community in our shop. And we just love being downtown. It's it's exciting down here. Why be average? We, we spent the past uh, few years, uh, when we first moved out to Houston, living in Houston and not being familiar with small towns. When we got to Conroe and found uh, the space available for Conroe and we started building out, we just started meeting so many people and started realizing the the, the, the small town sense of a community here in Conroe. And it's great. It, it's it's what's really growing our business is we love people that come in and they love us. I don't know why, but they love us. <laughs> well, well I think yeah. it's, you know what I think? It's because <laughs> it's a lot of fun to come in your business. Yeah. And there are a lot of people in there just talking and it's a wonderful coffee shop. Oh, uh, kind of the old style where you can just come in and relax and 
have a great beverage or some ice cream. Yeah. Or good, really good sandwiches, too. I Thanks. love your lunch. Yeah, our food's good. Well, what's going on in downtown Conroe? I mean, you just had the big catfish festival, uh, which is the big festival for downtown Conroe. Uh, what, what's happening to business downtown Conroe, in your opinion? And growing? Is it still the same? What, what's, what's it all about right now? I feel like it's growing. Um, people are expanding. We have the new boutique across the road. Um, there's just like an air of excitement down here, and people want to be a part of that. We have the farmer's market first Thursday of every month. We have the Shakespeare Festival coming up. I believe it's November 5th, um, and that was a fabulous event last year. Uh, Christmas parade, rodeo parade. I mean, any any calls for a parade and we'll have it. You know, it's just we just want to get people down here. There's wonderful merchants down here that everybody's family. And I th- we call this the call end of the block, you know, from <laughs> Brandon and I into the mercantile. But there's great businesses on the other block. We just we're a real tight knit family right here. And we just love it. We love Conroe. I think Conroe well, you know, one of the us. things I, I really enjoy about downtown Conroe, and I came from Houston too, right? Spent my entire life there. Uh, I love, you get two great theaters. Yes. Uh, you know, <clears throat> and the Owen with just great local productions, but the quality I love, the ability to park, walk across the street, yeah. and meet people and hang out. Uh, and then the same thing, I mean, with the Crichton, great shows, a big variety of entertainment, huge variety. And, again, quality productions. And yeah. People need to come and, and, and go to the theater. They do. And the Adams Family starts Friday. Um, they actually wanted me to try out for that. But with having a business, you know, it kind of, it was just, it's just not the right time right now. But Mary Poppins is coming up. So I've been asked if I would try for that. We shall see. Um, my Fair Lady we shall see. Um, you know, it's such a huge commitment from the people that do community theater. They've been rehearsing for the Adams Family for a month now, and they're here till 11 o'clock every night. So it's a huge commitment, and I think people don't realize the quality uh, that I, we have down here. It spent All the years that we spent in Houston, we could hear on radio all the advertisements for live theater you know, uh, all the different places in Houston. We never knew there was a, uh, there were two theaters right here on the square in Conroe. And and it's much more convenient. It's definitely cheaper. And it's still great theater. You know, it, it's, it's not non-professional in any way whatsoever. It's not amateurish. Th- these guys really put their time and effort, and they're really great. They're really great performers. And with that, you also have all the different art that's around here. You've got a guy across the street that's getting something, you know, that's, that's going to be part of Texas history. Uh, as far as his statues, they're, they're, as far as his uh, his bronze, his bronzes, yeah. yeah there's, You're talking there's, about Craig, yes, yeah, Craig definitely, Campabella. yeah, yeah, and and yeah, he's getting something placed in the Alamo. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, really, we know him. I yeah. know that guy. Well, and he has a know? shop. Anybody yes. can go in his shop. That's and, right. And see some of the work. And he's happy to discuss that with you and and what he does and his process. He has pictures in there of. You know, starting from a stick, a pole coming out the ground to it ending up being an amazing figure of a man. And he did the bust of Dr. Red Duke that is at the hospital in Houston. And I apologize, I forget which hospital he was at. But, I mean, there's some talent here in Conroe. We, we've, got, we've got the art gallery around, us, around the corner. We've got at least, you know, we've got so many different antique uh, the shops here. It, it's it's a thriving community, and all it has to do is for, for people to discover it. You know? Right. Well, and what I also love is the ability to casually just walk around. Mm-hmm. you got some good places to eat yep. or, or have a drink, uh, and it's just very casual and a good place to hang out. Yeah, I love it down here. So what's in the future <laughs> for Conroe Coffee? I mean, you guys just made a kind of did a major renovation, and, yeah. and, and which I love, by the way, a lot okay, more seating good. area. Mm-hmm. And uh, I absolutely, it's my green room for my yeah. show that I meet my guests and uh, introduce them to what you're doing. What's what's in the future? So we had a couple ideas with that new room. As far as moving all the seating in that area, we also it also provides a, a a venue for people, a small venue for you know birthday parties, things like that. That works out. It it provides maybe even a some type of late night venue. So we've been thinking about that for Friday and Saturday nights, um, and it it. 
creates a nicer flow and atmosphere for the for the shop. I'm, I'm sure you've seen that. So on the west side of 105, uh, on 45, we have another shop, another location that we've been working on for the past three months, and we're waiting for that drive through to go through. Uh, that's our next uh, project right there. But it's 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 really designed more so for our name to get out there so that we can direct them back to downtown Conroe because this is really our main shop. This is our main place, and we this want people home. to know. It's home, you know. <laughs> well, let me ask you as we kind of wind down the segment, the, what I consider the magic question in business today. I mean, in y'all's opinion, what does it take to be successful in business today? I firmly believe that it takes uh, complementary people. What, and, and what I mean is I have to compliment her skills. You know, if it wasn't, I always tell people this, if it wasn't for Leo, Conroe Coffee would be, would look like East Germany. It would be gray, coffee would be bitter. I'd be, I'd be a horrible coffee uh, shop owner. <laughs> if it wasn't for me, we wouldn't be open because none of the back office work, none of the actual uh, business uh, planning, none of the projects, none of the numbers would have been done without me. So that's really truly what helps a, a business is if you have if you have a person if you're running a business by yourself and you can do all that that's great and that's dandy but if you that's a rare thing it, it always takes two coin uh, sides of the coin for that business to run well and without Leo that place would not be pretty and things wouldn't taste great Aww, and it wouldn't, that wouldn't happen. She provides the fun. No, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. You're in I'm charge the of fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're in charge of fun. I, yeah. Well, well, you guys have, it's obvious to those of us who have been in the in the shop and whatnot, you, you've got a great partnership, and we've got about a minute or two left. What what, what makes that partnership? Obviously, you complement one another, but you're you're married. Yes. So husband and wives working together, a lot oh, of challenges. we give each other grief. We give each other grief. <laughs> the our employees Was that are, important to give yes, each other grief? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, we've had many people say there needs to be a video camera in there. It needs to be live because the things that happen in there, it's just hilarious. But it's those moments that you have to be there. I mean, a lot of people call me trouble. I tell, you know, Leo's my nickname. And people will say, oh, you know, my name's so I'm like, my name's trouble, you know, because I cause it. And we'll yell at you. You come in and, hey, what are you doing? You know, I mean, it's it's fun. We yeah. have a good time. And, and to top it off, we're going to have this window here. Yeah, we'll co- be putting a window in so, we're so g- we can watch you guys. So you can watch live radio, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. It's lots of fun. Yeah. And it has to be a two-way window so you can see our faces. And we're going to have <laughs> signs that say, boo, or bravo, or be quiet, so that customers can hold up, you know. I think we're going to need to install a curtain. In <laughs> Well, I really appreciate y'all stepping next door today. I know you're running a business, and you gave us this time and, and kind of got us up to speed on what's happening in downtown Conroe business-wise. And also, I hope the listeners, if you are in the Montgomery County area, that you come to Conroe Coffee, come downtown and enjoy yourself and have a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Thank you both for Thank being you. in today. Appreciate if somebody it. wanted to learn a little bit more about your business, what's the best way to do it? Well, the best way to go is just to go to ConroeCoffee.com. It'll take you to our Facebook page, and that'll give you up-to-date information, hours, location. Uh, location. Events. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I have a perfume event coming up November the 10th. It's a Thursday, and Nordstrom bring perfume in. And I have cheese and crackers and wine, and you can say, yes, I'm coming. And we, we just have fun. We have a good time. But everything's on our Facebook, and we're also on Twitter. Okay, well, fantastic. Again, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our final break for the day. And when we come back, I'm going to offer you what is a little advice for myself and my Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. And we are looking for talk show hosts and volunteer DJs for our music shows. Are you interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or have you always wanted to live out your dreams of being a music DJ? With the addition of Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1 and video aspects of our talk shows, we are needing people to grow with us. If you or someone you know might be interested, please contact us online at irlonestar.com slash contact us or call the station at 936 647 Five seven four seven for more information.
You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host for the Weekly Business Hour. We're to that point now that we're in our final segment of the day, where I offer my Silver Fox advisor tip of the week. The answer to the question, is your business being talked about or heard out there? I want to offer you some ideas that perhaps might be a little different or unusual. Uh, When someone asks you the question, is your business being heard, uh, that can mean a lot of different things to different people. First thing that pops into my head is, well, do I advertise, do I market? Obviously, those are very important things for every business and can mean different things to different people as far as advertising, uh, whether it be a koozie that you give away or a billboard that you buy on the street or as far as a TV or radio commercial. Marketing extends from beginning to end, here to there, can cover a lot of ground. But what I want to talk about today are some very basic, some basic blocking and tackling, as uh, the Vince Lombardi once said, blocking and tackling, because that's where every business can participate. Even a small one-man shop, a startup and where it doesn't have a lot of money to buy advertising or to implement a fancy marketing plan, they can do some blocking and tackling. And these are some ideas that I want to share with you. First of all, get in front of your customer. We talked a little bit with Mike O'Brien in the segment he was on earlier today about building customer relationships, how important it's been. He's been in business almost a year uh, and he, that's what he spent his time on is building relationships, either referral relationships, good relationships with customers, prospects, and people he sees. A lot of folks, though, and I mentioned it when we visit with Mike, I find so many people still sit behind their desk, if you will, too much. You need to seize every opportunity that comes along during business hours. And that's the hours at the very least that your business is open To me, it's a little bit longer because the day starts early and it ends late. But you need to be in front of people. You need to be in front of customers as much as possible. And I think Mike O'Brien is an advocate of that as well. Because the greatest battle you've got going today with all the social media and all the information that's flowing across the Internet constantly, and we see it even walking down the street, people staring at their, their cell phones talking to people, texting, how do you get in front of them? How do you communicate your message? You're challenged. Every business, large and small, is challenged by this. So it's important you get their attention, and one way you do is to get in front of them through networking groups, through being at your store, being at the counter, to be out calling on customers, doing as much of that kind of activity that you can fit in a day. Second thing you can do, and it's more of an efficient see thing is that is build some partnerships partnership with some businesses people that are not competitive you but perhaps in a similar business where there's kind of a fit Uh, the easiest way to do that is you if you're in a retail store atmosphere is to go to the store next door and say well i've got this special going on right now and i've had a little brochure printed up here uh do you mind if i put some on your counter and vice versa i mean that's a simple simple example of a partnership but look for companies and businesses that are in your area, that are in the general marketplace, and that are complementary to your business, and partner with them. Help them out. They help you out. The next thing I think is something that a lot of people miss uh, in business today, and that is to really focus your effort to communicate your business message to people. Focus. Get down Pick one part of your business, for an example, one product, one service, and develop a campaign, if you will. Develop a message around that and use that message everywhere in your business every day. And you can change that message. You can change that product. Mike was here earlier. He talked about LED lighting. But he's got lots of different products and services he offers. But it's the one that seems to be resonating. It's the one, as he said, that's getting him in the door now. It's a great example again. But a lot of people shotgun. Uh, It's like going in a restaurant that's got a 10-page menu. And you sit there and you go through the menu trying to figure out, what am I going to order? Especially when you go in for the first time. You get confused. And really, the experience ends up not being, I don't think, as satisfactory as it could. Well, there are many businesses. They may not have a 10-page list of products or services, but they come at you with too much at, at one time. And so I think the key is that you find and focus on a product, 
Choose the product that you believe that's moving and doing the best, and then focus on it. Again, you can change your messaging. You can change your product. Uh, if it's seasonal, do it then. Otherwise, do one every month or every two months. Make your own plan up, but the key is focus your business and everything that goes on in the business on the marketing side of your business on that one product or service. You know, one of the things uh, that I touched on earlier was advertising. When you buy advertising in any form, billboard, radio, uh, signs, giveaways, they cost money. There's no doubt about it. And if you're in your owner-owned business and you're a sole proprietor, or even if you're a smaller business, even if you're a large business, you know, one of the things that people miss that doesn't really cost a lot is to establish yourself, your business, as a thought leader. Now, that means you have to do a little bit of writing. You have to develop some content. And I respect and recognize that a lot of us are not really good at that. But, you know, who is the most knowledgeable about your business but yourself? And that you've got to be able to sit down, I think, and be able to reduce your thoughts to words. You've got to understand your products, your services. And that's all we're talking about doing is developing content. You can always hire someone or, or have a family member or friend. Or if you have a mentor like myself, we can review the content and sharpen it up a little bit for you. But the idea is you want to offer your opinion about something you know about. And what do you know most about your business? You should know your business inside and out, your industry inside and out. And you can start writing and posting these things on social media. It's not rocket science as far as the posting, but you will gain a following of people. You can do it through a neighborhood or local newspaper. Uh, you will find they are looking for people to write columns. There's lots and lots of opportunities. And the main thing you have to do, though, is simply take your knowledge of your industry, of your business, and put it down on paper and offer people tips, ideas. But the main thing is you're offering an opinion and you're offering your ideas and what you see is the best way to solve problems using products like yours or services and offering that information. Now, of course, you don't want to make it look like an advertisement because otherwise it's not a thought uh, leader you're advertising. But it's not a hard thing to do. And guess what? All it costs you is some time and then connecting with the business that would listen to you and what you have to say. And last but not least, it's the, the obvious thing. How do you promote your business? Work hard. Now, everybody that's listening to this program, this podcast, is probably going to say, well, I work hard. I work hard. But you've got to work relentlessly. You've got to work hard. You've, starting a business is not easy. Building a business is not easy. And you as the owner of the business, the manager of the business, you've got to be relentless. And I'm not talking about you have to put 70, 80 hours in a week because hard work is not just putting the hours in, but it's using your mind and thinking about your business and being creative in your thought and listening to other people. Uh, hopefully listening to this program gives you ideas. That kind of thing, be willing to take time to do that. But stay focused and build up your business by relentlessly day in and day out working on your business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to thank you for joining us this week. I really appreciate our guests, Michael Bryan and Tracy and Jason of Conroe Coffee, joining us and sharing in with us a little bit about their business. And I want to encourage you one thing. I want you to visit our website at IR, IRLoneStar.com to stay up with everything that's going on in Montgomery County. And as Dick told us in his segment, the station is expanding its broadcast to FM. Stay up with that. And as we close the show today, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to our sponsors, Patricia Cooper Insurance, Schooley Mitchell, Taylor PR, and, of course, the Silver Fox Advisors. Remember, you, too, can sponsor the Weekly Business Hour, so reach out to me via email, rick at irlonestar.com for details. Note that our podcast of the show will be posted on Wednesday, so look for it on the Weekly Business Hour page. And until next week, stay engaged this week and keep focused on what counts in your business. Thanks for checking out this production on Old Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, 
and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at dick at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.